Hi guys. Come on Come in. in. <laughs> mug is very playful. It's definitely cozy. And it's very functional. I would say adventure. Mountain. Map. My mug is bright, colorful, and playful. Raw, functional, and comfortable. Scratch. <laughs> uh, mystic. And um, an absolutely one of a kind. Warmth, comfort, uh, serenity. Traditional, refined, and comfortable. Cozy, tactile, and uh, undulating. Um, we draw inspiration from um, Scandinavian design, of course, uh, Japanese uh, design, like a lot of, uh, we, we, like, we really like, like clear, uh, clean aesthetics, like clean lines, and just like less is more. <laughs> I would say my style is based um, entirely in nature. Uh, every single piece I've made has been informed by either like a trip into nature or just thinking about places that I want to go. Um, like the Canyon collection, which are these, was based on a road trip in Northern California and Southern California up and down the coast. And I came back and I was like, I just, I had to make something like that. And then like the range pieces are, you know, obviously <laughs> that's what a range looks like. And I'm working on a, a new one about like the forest floor. And so I feel like any time I get wanderlust or a desire to see something different or I have seen something different, it finds its way into my work. I draw most of my inspiration from all of the work that I've done for other people. I worked for John O'Pandolfi for a number of years and still do projects with him. I learned a lot about functionality from him and I worked as a production thrower in Seagrove and have a lot of people that taught me things throughout the years, particularly this guy Tom Gray in Seagrove whose work is about food, who invited me in to eat dinner with him after every day I worked with him, and we used the plates that we made. And it made me start to think about how the whole process from beginning to end, that is from wet clay in all the way into the kitchen, really, where there's food on it, how the surface interacts with the fork, you know, I mean, all types of questions that come up. It inspired, it's inspired by the fall colors. It's supposed to be like the sky in the fall. The colors come from a photo um, that I took in Nicaragua of a pink building and a gray sky. And they're also the colors of two pinch bowls that I make for Food 52. Uh, well, this is Mount Marcy, which is the tallest mountain in New York State. Uh, it's in the Adirondacks, where we have not spent that much time yet. So this year's design for the mug is a teal speckle. Um, and we came up with it because we really liked the color um, of the glaze and we hadn't used it in anything and we feel it's very festive. Um, and the playfulness of the speckled pattern, like each speckle essentially is a different shape because it's made with a different part of the brush. Um, so we just thought it fits the mug body really nicely. Creating the piece. I like to design the handles, how it's gonna look, thinking how the glaze is gonna be, is it gonna have some raw texture, is it gonna be shiny? Um, so my favorite part is designing, thinking, imagining how it's gonna look at the end and then just the whole process is very fun to see if it works or if it doesn't. Trimming is one of them and it's where I am shaping the piece, getting it to its finished product and it's really, it's kind of meditative. I can get into a meditative space here. I just, trimming away. Here's the first pull. We call it a pull because I'm now gonna pull the clay up. And the first one, 
I do just with the palm of my hand like that. We really enjoy demolding the pieces, especially when it's like a new shape, a new design, because so, we get to see it for the first time. So we're demolding the mugs here. And we use a mold with the handle incorporated. So, so we gotta wiggle it a little bit. And we're gonna trim off the top part at a later stage when it's a little bit more dry. Probably lots of things that I should not be thinking about sometimes, you know? It's like, it's like meditation in that way, that it's like, <laughs> you're trying to focus on what you're doing, but I think, for me, it's so second nature that I get distracted sometimes with stuff. I am thinking about the shape of the piece I'm making, how it's going to fit in a person's hand, um, how it's going to look on their table or on their shelf. Well, this space is really new for me. I've only, I've got a CO just for this building about a month ago, but I bought this property over a year ago. And before I built this shop building, I built the kiln shed because I had to start firing work that I was making in a rental place. And I can show you the, the kiln now, which is a really, really important pr part of my process. The space is a big, beautiful space in an old building. Um, it was an art gallery at one point, and it's just got beautiful light, um, much bigger than my space in Brooklyn. We moved in here just, um, when was that, in June? Like four June ago? Uh, yeah, just yeah. like four months ago. Uh, we were working out of our home uh, just prior to that, so just in a 120 square feet uh, room. So that was uh, a bit, uh, a, bit, a bit, bit too small. It quickly became a bit too small. For... Like Ten times bigger right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everything and... is at the same place because we used to move things around around the house all the time. Well, this is one of two rooms that we have, and in this room we make all of the pottery. Everything is done in this room. I throw everything, and that's where all the pieces start, on the pottery wheel. Uh, it is in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. It is a shared studio space. I have two other studio mates, and this is my area. It is a hidden gem. There's always little nooks and crannies, because it's uh, New York real estate, not very big. But I make it work. Well, I built this kiln specifically for the silky matte glaze surface, which is what all of my work has, and it's it has to have a really slow cool, which is why I built the walls of this kiln really, really thick. And also the size of this kiln was really good for me because I make a lot of work. I fire this kiln about around once a month. Another reason that this, this kiln is so special is because it's fired with gas and I can change the oxygen levels in the kiln. So I can reduce the oxygen that's inside of the kiln and I do that with this damper that's in the chimney over here, which is, you know, just a shelf that I stuck in the chimney. And this is also a 16 foot tall chimney, which allows it, the air to really draw hard through. Oh, this is our second year. And what made you come back? Because you're all amazing. <laughs> I, I also think we really like the idea of getting to make a unique piece. This is my second year doing the mock project. My first year was the monocle handle, which was very fun. And this year I went with a more classical handle, my hoop handle, uh, with a full season color inspired mug. So this is the second year that we're participating in the mugs project and we're excited to launch the holiday mug uh, this year. It's a little bit different than last year's one, but it's the same shape and form. Um, so we thought it's kind of a nice, in case people wanna mix and match kind of their mug collection. Well, this is my first year and I'm really excited about it because I love Food 52. I actually get a lot of recipes from them, particularly roast chicken and banana bread, which I love very much.